I really wanted to talk about today kind of a positive vision. Really, I'm going to assume, and granted it is an assumption because until, until the vote is certified, until all these votes are counted, I'm going to assume Joe Biden is going to be president because that looks like the most, by a long shot, the most um, likely scenario, right? And the, that the Republicans keep the Senate so they control the Democrats and prevent them from doing the crazy, nutty, insane things, right? And the question is, what, what do we do? What do you do? What do all of us do to try to make the world a better place? To try to diminish the negative, the negatives in the political world in which we live. Now, I've said this before, I'll say it again. The most important thing you can do, the most important thing you can do is live, is live, is, is, is in, take these ideas that you have and apply them to your life and make your life a great life. Enjoy living. Forget about these elections. Forget about politics. Forget about Democrats and Republicans and Libertarians and, 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 and think. Just, just find something you love to do and do it. Go out there and, um, and create a beautiful space for you to live in, to work in, to create in. I mean, I try, right? Um, and so the, the primary focus you should have in your life is on your life and how to make the best of it, how to make the most of it, how to enjoy it, how to be productive, how to have a great career, how to make money, how to find somebody you love, how to, how to create a family that you love, how to live a happy life. And politics should be third, fourth, fifth, sixth, I don't know, tenth on the list of things to worry about, things to be concerned about. Because you know what? There are lots of things day to day in your life that, that, that you should be dealing with, that you should be confronting, that you should be managing, that you should be improving on, that you should do to make your life the best that it can be. And that should be your primary focus. And by the way, that even that, even just that helps spread good ideas because people will come to you and say, how come you're so happy? How come you're so successful? What's your secret? Well, I read Ayn Rand. Here's Atlas Shrugged. You should read it. I mean, that's huge. That's huge. So first and foremost and always... Focus on your life. Make yourself a better thinker. Make yourself a better liver. Make yourself take, take the ethics seriously. Live up to the ethics. Take pride. We haven't talked about pride yet. We'll do a show about pride soon. But take pride seriously. Pride means living up to your best. Striving for perfection. Being the best that you can be. And that's just a cliche, but it's real. It's what life is about. But what do we do politically? I am saving your Super Chat questions. I will get to them. What do we do politically? Can we do anything politically? And, I, and my answer is absolutely yes. But before we get to the positive, let me say something about the negative. We will not move this country one inch if we play partisan politics. We will not move this country one inch if we become tribalists. If we embrace a political party because it's a political party and then we follow everything that it says. We cannot move 
anything, the world an inch forward. For example, by becoming Trumpists and supporters of, supporters of Trump to the extent of never criticizing, accepting everything he does, and thinking that anybody who criticizes, anybody who is, is, who, who is against him is the emphasis enemy. Don't think in terms of Republicans and Democrats. Think in terms of what you should always be thinking in terms of. Truth. What is true? What is right? What is just? Is this policy moving us towards greater freedom? Or isn't it? Is this policy supportive of individual rights or violation of individual rights? That's what needs to happen. That's what we need to focus on. So if a, Democ if a Republican does something good that promotes individual rights, it's moving in that direction, let's support that policy without enshrining the man as a super god. And if that same Republican does something that's antagonistic to individual rights, that's bad, that's wrong for freedom, then let's criticize that. And the same with the Democrat. No matter who is in power, no matter what, who's passing the bills, we should support that, not the party, not the personality. Those bills that support freedom, that move us in that direction, and object to those who don't. And look, always keep in mind, though, the bigger picture. So, for example, yeah, we're always going to support tax cuts. But we should never be super excited about tax cuts. Because on their own, they do nothing. What we should really be excited about and emphasize and push and get people engaged on is on cutting spending, which is what they don't want to talk about, what they don't want to be engaged on. So that's our job. Cutting taxes is easy. Every Republican in history has done it. Let's focus on the hard stuff. Cut the spending. Reform entitlement. Yes, ultimately we want to get rid of all entitlements. It shouldn't be Social Security. It shouldn't be Medicaid. But you're not going to win that argument. And you're not going to win it. And you don't really believe it in the short run. It has to be phased out. So for now, let's talk about reducing not reducing, uh, uh, sorry, restructuring entitlements. For example, for example, here's a great issue for us. There is a massive redistribution of wealth going on right now, and it's going to go on for the next 20 years, from young people to old people. From young people to old people. So, for example, you know, old people are using Medicare, and the baby boom generation is going to drive up the cost of Medicare to dominate the budget. I mean, all other spending will be irrelevant. Social Security is bad, but Medicare is much worse. And who pays for old people's Medicare and Social Security? Well, don't let anybody fool you. The money that they paid into the system has been spent a long time ago. And so it's young people paying for their health care, for their Social Security. So we need to pick up the mantle and talk about phasing out, privatizing, reforming entitlements. And, and the best way to do that is kind of let the old people who are 65 already have what they were promised and privatize everything else. Yeah, the left will say all kinds of things about us. Of course, the right says the same thing. It's not like the right will actually pass any of this. They've had, uh, they've had the Senate, the House, and the presidency. They had it under Trump. They've had it under Bush. And they did none of this, none of it. It's our job to talk about it. It's our job to bring it up. It's our job to push these ideas. 
constantly and emphatically and to create a momentum around it. This is the way you get to young people. Your life sucks, not because there's not enough welfare, not because of, I don't know, systemic racism. Your life sucks because you're going to be taxed so high in order to fund Medicare for people you don't know. We have to get engaged in politics, not in the little partisan stuff. We have to get engaged in politics on the principled stuff, on the big stuff, on the stuff nobody else will talk about, on the stuff we're the only ones who are willing to say. Yeah, somebody says, yeah, we should be advocating for not how much the steel tariff should go up or down or which country should we have it on. There should be no tariffs, zero tariffs across the board. And then... If you want to deal with China stealing this or doing that, then you can have sanctions. You can bring, shut down the embassy. You can surround them with the Sixth Fleet, whatever. Sixth Fleet's in the Mediterranean, so they'd have to travel over there. But, you know, you can deal with them. But tariffs is not the way. Tariffs is just, it's anti-individual rights. It's a violation of the rights of Americans. It's a tax increase. So... But so many people in the free market world got caught up with the aura of Trump and you can't, you can't criticize him and all of that. that. Yeah, no, this time tariffs are good. This time the Chinese will pay. This time trade wars will work. This time will be different. Gr really? It's just straight. Yeah, intellectual property threat, then sanction them. Or boycott them completely. But tariffs are not the way you deal with intellectual property theft or anything else. Tariffs is a tax on your own people. It's not a way to deal with other countries. Again, this is 101. This isn't controversial. This isn't difficult. This is just... This is why it's so frustrating. And, and the whole Trump presidency was frustrating. Because he did stuff that was obviously anti-individual rights. Obviously anti-freedom. Obviously bad for America. And people supported those policies because it was Trump. So, if you want a better world, if you want elections in the future where you might have a candidate that you'd be excited to vote for, then we have got to be principled and consistent and fight for the things we actually believe in. Fight for the ideas we actually believe in. Not the ideas that are going to win. Not the ideas that this or that candidate might or might not support. Not get caught up in personalities. But fight for the ideas that we believe in. Advocate for policies that move us there. It doesn't mean you have to get it all at once. It doesn't mean Social Security goes away all at once. It doesn't, you know, on immigration, which I know many people disagree with me on. It's not that I'm advocating tomorrow open borders. Ultimately, yes. But in the meantime, there's a phasing in. And part of that phasing in would be, for example, that I've given is allow anybody you in who has a work permit. So work on the principles. Work on the... On the, on the foundational ideas, and, and whenever you're tempted because you like this guy or you like that guy or because politically, it, stop yourself. Check your premises. Go back to basics and fundamentals. Go back to principles. That's the beauty of principles. Go back to principles and say, is this policy consistent with my principles? Is me supporting tariffs in China consistent with my principles? Somebody asked about the Lex Friedman interview. I, I just don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew. I thought it was going to be, I mean, he's bouncing around. Some of the interviews he's releasing seem to be older ones. Others were from his trip to California and Oregon when he was traveling, because you can see it's in a hotel room. So I, I don't know. At some point, at some point, um, 
the interview will be out. It is a three-hour interview, a little over, I think, three hours. And I think it was great. I think it was a really good interview. I think Lex really enjoyed it. There were a number of times where he was he seemed blown away by my answers. So I, I think it's I think it's going to be fun uh, for everybody, for you guys, and and most more importantly, much more important than you guys. Sorry, uh, are the new people who uh, this will expose uh, expose them to me who probably don't know who I am and have never seen me before because he has a very unique audience. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited to see it. Hopefully we'll get good viewership. You know, uh, uh, Eric Weinstein just, I don't know, got 600,000 views or something, his interview with Eric. But Eric Weinstein is huge. Uh, I'm qu not quite as, uh, as well-known and popular. So we'll see how, we'll see how well it goes. Um, so my point is, that we need to start focusing on the positive, on what we want. Stop playing defense. Focus on what we can get and where we can go. Focus on the issues important to us, not on other people's issues. Focus on our principles, not on their principles. So the whole point has to be positive, the virtues of capitalism, the wonders of the modern world, the amazing world we live in, how you can make your life so much better, how under freedom we succeed. So even entitlements is not a big issue for us because the only reason we want entitlements to go away is that you young people can have more money to invest in yourselves, invest in your life, invest in what you want to do. So we need to be less negative and more positive. We need to be more unique and less just part of the crowd. We need to be more controversial. We need to be more out there. We need to be less, less conventional. I mean, Again, what Trump did to some people who call themselves objectivists is he made them conventional because they, become, they just became Trump heads, justifying everything he would do, even, shockingly for me, hugging you know, and, and hanging out with the, with the dictator of North Korea. They even justified that. I mean, that's, again, 101. So get away from the partisan stuff. Get away from the nationalism, the, the xenophobia, the, the, the closed-mindedness, which I see so much, so much around me. Let's be positive. And, and on this positive note, I want to make one more point. I listened to, um, I, I saw a talk recently by um, Peter Diamantis. I don't know if you guys know Peter Diamantis. He wrote a book called Abundance, and, and I read the book too. And the book is, is really interesting, and the talk was really interesting. And it's, I, I'm so jealous of Peter and others like him in, in, in Silicon Valley because he is so optimistic. Tell with politics, tell with all this rioting and demonstrations and this BS. We are potentially on the cusp of some unbelievably, unbelievable technological revolutions. Whether in biotech or whether in AI or robotics or, or, or you know, just technology more broadly, autonomous cars, we are on the cusp of amazing things, of amazing achievements of amazing potentials. I mean, it really is true that it really is true that the potential for life extension is stunning in terms of what is potentially possible in the next to achieve in the next 10, 20, 50 years. AI and 
Robotics will, will, will increase, will, will dramatically improve healthcare, will dramatically improve, have the potential to dramatically improve our lives. Dramatically improve how we do everything. And indeed, autonomous cars will reduce deaths on the road dramatically and save you huge amounts of time because traffic jams will be less frequent and you'll be able to work while the car is driving itself. Now, again, all these things depend on regulations. They depend on politics and politicians staying away. But our focus should be on that. Free up the mind. Free up the innovators. Free up these people to make our lives better. Yet we obsess on how evil these businesses men are instead of obsessing about how wonderful they're making life for us and how evil the people who are trying to stop them are. I mean, there is, you know, again, artificial intelligence robotics is going to take away jobs, yes, but they're going to take away the jobs nobody wants to do. The jobs that are too dangerous. And one of the points Peter Diamantis makes, I've made this point before, but it's rare to find somebody make the point, so I was so impressed that he did it, is that AI makes us all smarter. AI is a tool that makes people, let's say with mediocre or even low IQ, much, much smarter. And I'm not talking about the chip that you plant in the brain, which, wow, I mean, that would be pretty amazing if they, when they do that. I know Elon Musk has a company called Neuralink that does that, or is working on it. But I'm even talking about just the fact that I'm in a computer and I have access to all the information ever produced at my fingertips instantaneously, easily. I mean, that's just made me much smarter. I know more. I have access to more. I can do more. And this is just the beginning of what these computers will be able to do. We are just at the cusp of a potential revolution that will change human life in ways that I don't think we can fully comprehend. You'd have to be a science fiction writer to fully get it. And instead, we, 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 you know, instead of focusing on that, we focus on this nonsense within the objectives movement. We focus on this political BS. We obsess about voter fraud and who gets elected president as if it makes that much difference. We should be defending progress defending industry, and the most important industry right now is technology, defending and, and, and allowing for innovation and for growth and for, I want to live to be 250 years old in a healthy way, not connected to machines. And to do that, to do that, we need to be the defenders of technology, the defenders of business, the defenders of freedom, the defenders of getting the regulators off of us. Again, it was this administration that went after Google in an antitrust lawsuit just a few weeks ago. If you want me to answer questions, you're going to have to super chat them because I can't see in the string of things what you're asking. And why would I ask that? Why would I answer them versus, versus questions that are, that are being posed at that are being posed and, and dollars put to them. Um, yeah, somebody says flying cars. I mean, drones, look at the drone technology. Amazon got a permit now. Look, it needs a permit. That's disgusting. But it got a permit to use drones to deliver to you, to your doorstep, the stuff you need. I mean, that's cool. And that's what we should be defending. That's what, not just defending, we should be fighting for it. Not defending, we should be on the offensive. We should team up with, with the people doing this amazing technology. And, and, and we should understand this technology and its impact on human life, and we should be advocates for it. Now, I intend to start doing that on a much more significant basis. So I'll be starting a new podcast in January that has as its focus, as its focus, innovation, progress, um, what it takes, 
what's required, what's happening. I'm going to try to get some of the top innovators to come on the show, and I'll do interviews. The show will be primarily interviews. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I intend to do in the years to come on this. Not objectivism, but not inconsistent with. Completely consistent with objectivism, but not objectivism, not philosophy, not... But something positive about innovation, growth, progress, success, new technologies, how far we can go, and what does it take? So it will very much be an anti-regulation podcast, right? We will talk about how regulations destroy, destroy technological progress. This is part of the thing. Yeah, Matt Ridley will be, Matt Ridley will be somebody I invite, but there's, it's, I don't want to say too much because I've got big plans, and it's bigger than Matt because Matt has some flaws, and part of the thing will be to engage with Matt and then to engage with other people and to build towards a real understanding of innovation and progress, a real understanding of, and, you know, there might be a new, some new terminology involved. I mean, there's a lot that we're going to be working on in the next few months leading up to this January, um, this January um, launch of the podcast. And it's going to be a multi-year project, and... Uh, Ultimately, there might even be an investment component to it and all kinds of things. So I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about it, putting plans together right now. And by the way, just so you know, your contributions, your financial support for the Iran Book Show makes all that possible, right? It's not going to be in the early days a profit-making operations. I think ultimately, if we could create an investment product, it'll make doodles of money. But originally, it's going to be all money going out, not money coming in. And that money going out is going to be possible partially because of your support. Because, uh, you know, you, you, you're you supporting the Iran Book Show, which you can do on the Super Chat here. It's been kind of, kind of slow today. And particularly with the big amounts. We haven't had, we haven't had the, what, what Derek used to call the whales. The whales have not showed up. And, of course, more importantly, in some sense, uh, is the monthly contributions. And I know some of you have already added, some of you have increased your contributions. Thank you for doing that. We're still about 24, 23, 2400 short of our goal of, of increasing the contributions by $3,000 a month. So those of you who can't afford to increase your contributions, I'd really appreciate it. From 100 to 250, or 250 to 500, or from 10 to 20, 25 to 50, whatever you can do, um, I'd really appreciate it. You can do that on youronbookshow.com slash support on Subscribestar, on Patreon, on Locals, uh, any one of those platforms will work. And of course, you can do it right here, right now, with uh, Super Chat. Uh, that, is, uh, that is fantastic. Also, I want to remind you to like the show before you leave. A lot of people are coming and going. I see the numbers fluctuate a lot. Before you go, if you like anything I've said, please press the like button. It helps the, it helps the algorithms of YouTube recognize the show as something that people value and therefore uh, promote. And, of course, if you're new to the show, thank you for listening. It's great to have you here. And please subscribe. Uh, subscribe. And, and if you press the bell next to the subscription button, you will also get notifications when we go, when we go live. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping to have people from the life extension uh, uh, companies come and talk about that. Uh, I, there's a lot of exciting technologies out there. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's super cool. It's super cool. And, you know, too much of us... Activists, philosophers, people who deal with politics, I mean, it's, it's too dark. But there's a whole world out there where, where real progress is being made, where the world is really being changed. I mean, we, we take the change for granted. We take Zoom for granted. We take this, the ability to do this on YouTube for granted. We take our iPhones for granted. We take all that for granted. But what, and, and all of that really didn't exist 10 years ago, 12 years ago. What happens in 10 years, in 20 years? How far can we go? And why aren't we thinking about that instead of thinking about, oh, who won Nevada? How many votes are still going to be counted? Oh, oh, you know, it's close. Anyway. I figured uh, I figured we'd uh, I, I, I'd make that pitch. We're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, yeah. We'll talk about 
I think nuclear power is really, really interesting and, and, and really a huge potential for the future. I, I think that, um, I think that you, you know, we've got companies building supersonic jets. We've got, I mean, there's really a lot of innovation going on that is exciting right now, today. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>